All right, ICT traders, you're welcome back to the channel. I want us to do some practical session right here on this video. This is because of this particular question I got from this guy. Let's read out his question first before we go back to the explanation. This is the question on this particular video. He said, if we have multiple fair value gaps on a chart and the fair value gap closest to the present price is being taken off, please, sir. Can the price still go and take off the fair value gap further away? Now, I don't care whether this guy is a newbie or is an advanced trader. This is why I take my time to make explanations time and again and again. So more often, I'll be checking your comments and I'll make videos according to your questions. Now, let's do some practicals here and then I'll clear out some things on this subject matter. Now, a lot of questions have reached out to me like that. So multiple fair value gaps, which one to use? That is the question. So let's start from the very basics. We have price. I'll go straight to the point. I don't want to waste your time. We have price coming down, coming down. From the look of eyes, you know, this is a downtrend. Now I'm taking this area, for example. I am taking this area, for example. So I will decide to now, first of all, clear out the chart by my right hand side so i will have the comfortability of doing this explanation so boom price shifted structure to the downside after doing some shift of structure to the upside or clearing liquidity whichever you want to see price cleared out liquidity now first in face after clearing out liquidity where did the movement starts that is the first question you should ask yourself. So this is where you will begin to say, okay, this is where my movement started. All right. That was the highest level swing high. That was where my movement started. The second question you will ask yourself, how far has my movement gone or how far is it? So this is it. Boom. So this is a liquidity void. It's an imbalance in price action. It captures so many fair value gap. We call it a liquidity void. Normally, the smart money are not happy when such a price action happens because this moves away quickly and there are no equal buyers to balance this price action. That's why we call it imbalance. So in order for this price action to be balanced, price will have to come back and do its job before going lower. So in it coming back to do its job, there are three things that matters. Time, price, and how that price went back to that area. This is why we have institutional reference points such as order block, mitigation block, fair value gaps. So we have multiple fair value gaps on our way going up there. So let's start counting them. From here, we have one fair value gap here, just here. We have another fair value gap here. You can decide to label them. We have another one here, multiple fair value gaps. We have another one here. I know there's going to be another one here, definitely. Right? So we have several fair value gaps. Let's see it. Okay, this is it. We have this one right here. So we have almost five fair value gaps. Which one is then price going to use to come down? That is the question, right? Because in an ideal situation, we want to go bearish with the big boys. So that is the essence of retracing. We have almost five fair value gaps. So the first thing you need is to patiently wait for the retracement to establish itself. Once you have three candles printing in the opposite direction from this movement, you could establish that retracement is coming into the market. This is what I mean. We have one candle first. You see? Let's see this one closed. So we have one candle here. We have the second candle now closing above this one, this area. The third candle now closes. So this is the rule. Generally, this is the rule. The moment you saw this first one, second one, and third one, each of these candles are closing above each other. What I mean is this. You see this one, this one. And this one, the closing of these candles are above this place. Forget about this uh, cell candle. You could have it like that. But then once you have this, 
you could establish that this place is a low so this is the only reason why you pick your fifth level put it here to here so this has established that this is a high this is a low so this is a price range so the first thing first this is when you start filtering which of the fair value gaps you're going to use now any fair value gap that is in this green shaded portion because this is entirely like a hundred percent measurement half of it is called equilibrium above it is called premium lower than it is called discount so anything in this discount area you will strike it out any fair value gap in this discount area you will take it out is not going to be considered in this competition first screening starts so we take it out so we take this guy we are no longer interested in that fair value gap so it's none of our business and that is why if you are taking trade from this fair value gap you may get into the deception of inducement because you will become a liquidity for price and price will take you out and target the ones at the extreme so the fair value gaps we have right here above us will now have to pass through some of the screenings we will do so the first thing we do now the first fair value gap we have is here now this is where it becomes interesting even though this particular fair value gap above is attractive and this one too is attractive we will have to do our assignments carefully now when we say our assignment we need to know what exactly is a confluence all right confluence is simply when you have more than one institutional reference point coinciding this is what i mean can you see this place is this a low we have a low right here is this a fair value gap so this combination the low and the fair value gap automatically makes this fair value gap a high probability point of interest all right a high probability point of interest so for us to stay at the safer side for us to stay at the safer side if we are sure that this fair value gap is now the high probability fair value gap not this one above and not this guy this law alone has made this guy high probability fair value gap all right it has made it a high probability fair value gap and then don't forget you can also consider this guy as a breaker all right but then this one is what ict calls unicorn entry model a confluence of this law and this fair value gap but it is not enough it is not enough because the question you should ask next is where then is my stop loss going to be because nobody sees the future in the market what we do is that we intelligently predict price direction we intelligently predict price directional bias and that is why if i am taking this trade i'm going bearish if i say i'm putting my entry right here at the middle of the fair value gap my stop loss then will be big guys and i will go to this area am i going to reach this now two questions if you are willing to reach this then you can go ahead and take it so that you will not miss the trade even though you can see that there is a fair value gap above it price can surprise you by doing this it can come here and move away so that is why you will have to use this area as the first interest in the fair value gaps that you have all right and then secondly there is other way i normally do it you see this four hour time frame i will decide to go down to the 15 minute time frame straight and what i will do is that oh i don't have data for that 15 minute but let's see one hour okay one hour time frame will now help me out I will wait for the retracement to go immediately i start seeing myself in the premium area and this fair value gap to be precise i will wait for a shift in market structure to the downside 
shifting market structure is there to establish that the movement upward has finished. This is what I mean. Quickly, I don't want to take much time explaining it. If I see price coming, coming, immediately it came to this high probability point of interest. If it is going to go low, it will give me a shift in market structure in the lower time frame, and then I will take it from there. And this is the advantage of this. I can easily use this place as my stop loss as opposed to the high here. I hope this is understandable. So let's let's go through it and see. Let's go through it and see. So we have that retracement. We have price going up, going up, going up, going up. Can you see now? Price has finally touched that area. So this is what I meant by that. This is what I meant by having the retracement to come in in the lower time frame. You can do it across any time frame you are looking for. All right. I <laughs> just, this is understandable enough. So did I have a shift in market structure here? No, I could have used this place for entry, but price did not shift structure. Even though I will not be able to see it clearly in the one hour time frame, I'm replaying this data. But then if I continue, this is it. This is it. This is it. Shift in market structure immediately afterward after touching that high probability point of interest remember the low and the favor luga and this is your entry these areas immediately after price you see did you see price crashing here you can look for any institutional reference point this is it is that not a breaker that is a breaker guys so it is so easy to do these things, guys. This is a breaker. And then I will use that entry. I will go short here. And my stop loss is now here. Now, notice what I have done. Instead of using a very big stop loss that will reach this place, now I have stop loss lower. All right? If not because of this very long week, I will have used this place as my stop loss. But then to stay at the safer side, you can use this place. So this is the reason why we do that. I hope you are understanding and you're getting value out of this. So that is as easy as doing anything. So this is how to select a favor lookup, guys. Please get it correctly. Get it correctly. Let me show you the last example. <laughs> last example. I hope I find another one. Okay. I actually saw one right here. So look at this. All right. So many favor lookups. You have them here. Oh, let's see. You have one. Go and do practicals with these guys. All right. You have two. Here. You have three. There. So according to what we said, which one gives you the most important one? Definitely this one has been crushed out. It's in this count. How about this one? Now the battle is between this one and this one. So if it were me, I would rather use confluence. You see, this low I have, I don't have anything there, but then I also have a mitigation block here. The one that is coinciding or the confluence with the mitigation block is the fair value gap I will use, I will use for entry. So this is it. This is your entry. And this one gives you a very small stop loss so I can use it for my entry. <laughs> Are you understanding this? So it must be at the premium. And then secondly, if it has confluence, it becomes more powerful, more powerful. And then you can use the lower time frame to get an entry. I just gave you a short explanation, guys. I'm starting my mentorship shortly. And then you are going to hear the announcement. You will get more knowledge, more value. You will have time to ask me one on one questions in the Zoom meetings I'll be having with the community members. You may consider joining, guys. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.